Hey guys, we're Bullinger95, recording live from a little county prison cell. This is an episode that I'd had uh, backed up for a while, and now I'm going to be doing it. This is uh, Aku from Samurai Jack versus the Lich from Adventure Time. Uh, heads up, both of these characters are very vague in their abilities and they have very few feats to uh, work with. So uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of speculating here. Um, starting with Aku, we know that Aku is, uh, the primordial, uh, source of evil. He is all that is, he is all that is bad and vile, and he is a shogun of sorrow, the shape-shifting master of darkness, and all of that. He is the, the one true evil in the Samurai Jack universe, um, to the point where, uh, godlike beings or not god like beings gods it was like vishnu sobek and uh and odin i think battled the primordial darkness that later became aku and uh failed to eliminate all of it and the tiny bit that escaped grew and festered and became what we know as as aku and um that little bit of him grew enough to almost con well not almost to destroy ancient japan to where as we know jack traveled around the world and was given his ancestral sword to to combat aku and that's why aku had to send him forward in time so among aku's abilities that we've seen we've seen that he's pretty much impervious to all conventional weapons the only weapons that we see able to harm him are magical that being said he is able to be opposed by pretty much all righteous forms of magic um like i said jack's ancestral magic the scotsman's celtic magic um those monks that had like hid from him by their spiritual energy being like pure yeah like he is fallible to other types of magic it's just he's not like it's not like kryptonite it's just he doesn't have, he can't overcome them per se, or he can be damaged by them like anyone else could. Um, in the Samurai Jack universe, though, it appears that righteous beings can't be harmed by righteous magic, so, or at least not in the hands of evil beings, but that, that's neither here nor there. Um, we, we know that he's able to uh, shapeshift, that's his name. We know that he's able to disappear into the shadows. We know he's able to um, spawn, you know, minions from basically nothingness. Uh, he's ba he's able to he's able to manifest the identity of evil, right? So even a pure-hearted being like Jack, who had some amount of evil, just anger and hatred inside of him. He was able to manifest that hatred and turn it into another being, right? And turn him into into evil Jack or whatever he's called until Jack let go of his anger and then evil Jack ceased to exist. Um, we've seen him able to obviously open up portals in time. We've seen him able to possess others. We've seen him able to... Uh, he apparently has laser eyes. He can breathe fire. Uh, this fire, which was able to break an indestructible magic Celtic sword. Um, so I guess that suggests that his magic, you know, it works both ways. Like he can be harmed by righteous magic, but otherwise indestructible righteous magical objects can be destroyed by him. I mean, yeah, he's, um, yeah, even, even after a dystopian age of of reigning all over mankind like having them under his heel and then having them rise up against him he basically just hid without without purpose because he had no opposition he didn't there was no reason to go extinguish humanity because he couldn't be bested by them so he just figured Unless or until I find out that uh, the one guy that can kill me returns, I guess I'll just stay here. Um, but yeah, I mean, 
hypothetically, I guess Aku would be capable of like anything using his his evil magic, but uh, we we don't see too much of him to be able to ascertain that, right? Um, on to the Lich. So the Lich is a another primordial being, beginning uh, reigning from the time before time. The Lich is the embodiment of death, of uh, of inevitability, the end, the void, just all things that signify basically nothingness, right? And because of that, he doesn't make too many appearances in the show, actually. <laughs> Most of the time we see his influence, we see others being possessed by him. We see the environment, um, you know, we see life withering and dying in his wake. We don't see him necessarily fighting a lot. Um, we can tell he's got some form of pyrokinesis. We know that he is, uh, he was born from a uh, comet that was meant to contain the embodiment of evil. The other one was the embodiment of good, which became Finn. And we know that um, he's essentially immortal. He just can't be killed. Again, can't be killed by conventional weaponry. Can't be killed by time. Just He just waits and waits and waits. Um, we do find out later that he is actually technically a mortal being. He's the, he is a sorcerer who, uh, follows the, uh, the being Gulb, who is a, uh, cosmic entity that, uh, embodies the, uh, you know, the concept of chaos and disorder, but pretty much the entire time we just see uh, he is a threat, much like his embodiment of death. Uh, he is a threat that cannot be evaded. He doesn't, maybe that's why he doesn't approach people. Maybe that's why he doesn't have to come at you is because he knows when all is said and done, he's going to get you or you're going to come to him one way or another. Everyone, everyone does. So yeah. But, um, yeah, also, but again, we see him have multiple forms of magic. We see him able to possess people. We see uh, Princess Bubblegum got possessed to one point where she had to build her crown that uh, makes her resistant to it. Um, and he even, after being reborn as a good person, was still, his evil influence was still laying dormant inside them so that that person had to use their good, basically their, their, you know, goodness to suppress him. Um, yeah. And, but other than that, yeah, other than that, he can't really, there's not really much fighting him off. If he's, he's possessed, uh, slugs, he's possessed other beings. He's, he's made, um, he, his influence can't really be completely avoided as well as, um, there's a Lich King in every dimension, apparently, because in the Adventure Time universe, there is a singularity point that determines the creation of all other dimensions, basically a, um, interdimensional kind of continuity space, unspace, if you will, where, you know, no matter how different things are, everything will have set rules and, and, you know, everything will have a set standard. And one of those standards is a Lich King because his undead hand fell into that portal. So, and presumably regrew to create another Lich King. So we know that every dimension will have its own Lich King. Um, so in a, I, I've meandered on about this enough. 
in a fight between these two, it's very difficult to kind of ascertain how this would go. Um, they're both seemingly all powerful, but never really demonstrate it. Um, there are some things to consider though. So the Lich King exists in all realities, right? We, we understand that. And Aku is capable of traveling through, uh, through time, but that's probably, unless he goes to the future, that's not really going to help him because, well, actually if he travels through time at any point, that's not going to really help him because the Lich King is also immortal and has existed since before the beginning of time, much like Aku. So Aku won't be able to avoid the Lich King or do anything like where he, you know, goes back in time to, to kill him before he became a threat or anything because he will always be there. Right. And he can't go forward in time. Like he couldn't do what he did to Jack and send him forward in time because he'll always be there as well. So there's no way for him to really, uh, really do that. Um, that being said, Aku was able to basically keep the world under his heel for presumably the entirety of the time that Jack was away. So what thousands of years or something. Whereas the Lich King, despite existing for as long as he has never really overtook anything. Like I said, he doesn't really initiate much. He just kind of lets his influence take over people. Cause like I said, he's the embodiment of, the inevitability of death. Why does he need to rush? You know, he knows you're coming. Um, <clears throat> now, Aku is presumably, like, we, we know that Aku can be harmed by other forms of magic, but the real question is, is the Lich King's magic to be considered evil? Because... If so, Aku can pretty much take dominion over evil, right? Or at the very least can absorb it into himself. So, considering the Lich King was born from a comet that was the embodiment of evil, that should mean that Aku really is more or less immune to that, right? It's not righteous magic after all. So, and the Lich King, to my knowledge, doesn't really have that same vulnerability. However, Aku can't turn him into a good being because he's incapable of doing anything good with his magic. And even if he could, the Lich would show him that even when turned into a good being uh the evil still existed within him and was capable of attempting to take over so there's no real way for either of these characters to in a way truly kill each other however i would say that aku's power if i had to base it off anything aku's power would definitely be greater than that of the liches um, not to mention, while the Lich is a being that has existed through time, he is not a god. He is actually a he's actually a sorcerer. Yes, he was created from a comet that's the embodiment of all view, but he he's not like a he's not like an overseer or a ruler of everything. He's um he's a sorcerer to the being Gulb, who is the embodiment of chaos and disorder. It was probably more like Aku, but he's not the popular one, so I'm not going to use him in this fight. Um, and even Golb was able to be... Even Golb's evil was able to be nullified by fusing him with a good-hearted being that sacrificed themselves to become, you know, Golbetti, right? So even the being above the Lich King is susceptible... To being conquered, whereas Aku was only really able to be conquered. It, well, he, he was suspect to being destroyed in the past, right? 
where Jack was able to kill the past him, thus eliminating the future him from existence. But at the same time, that was only really doable because of ancestral magic, which, um, yeah, it's a righteous form of magic that the Lich King does not have access to. So there's not really a means by which... And, and yeah, the like I said, the Lich would exist in every... Um, in every reality. So I don't know how either of these two characters would kill the other. However, if I had to make a choice, I would say Aku, because like I said, I think his power just operates on a greater scale than Lich's does. And like I said, we've seen Aku physically battle. We've seen Aku not be, you know, destroyed. The Lich King was temporarily defeated by the hero Billy, right? Who had, I think it was like the gauntlet of the hero, which is like a, an artifact that was able to destroy him, except it didn't. It just, he still survived and came back. So, you know, but other than that, we've never really seen the Lich King do battle. We've only seen him influence others which has been resisted so if we're taking into you know their accomplishments and we're taking into consideration how strong they probably are a result of that i think aku is probably greater and you know i i hate to use status or a title to determine things but let's not forget aku has also fought three gods right righteous gods who failed to exterminate his primordial form. So, if there is even the smallest possibility of one of these characters defeating the other, it's going to be Aku defeating the Lich. And no matter how minute that possibility is, it's still going to be more times than the Lich is going to defeat Aku. So, yeah, anyway... I've rambled onto this enough. Uh, Verbal Engine 95. See ya.